if you watch my Gropner versus Jim fan comparison, I did find that the Gropners are much, you know, just create a lot less vibration, obviously, because a lot less flex. But it's still possible. I get a lot of comments saying, hey, you know, Jim fans work for me, or uh, my quad is perfectly balanced with $1 props, which is great. And what I've generally found is there are two camps related to vibrations. There's the camp of guys that say, hey, Everything works great, perfect, and there's, I guess, guys like myself that uh, have to continuously battle it. And so that's what, you know, I, I plan on doing, and I'd love to get to a point where I can use these cheap props uh, to have a well-balanced quad instead of having to pay $12 a prop for the Gropners, which are great, don't get me wrong, but um, I think, you know, as, as I've learned from all of you or many of you, that it's possible without having to buy expensive props. So the next step that I'm going to take is uh, actually point out that I've, you know, to be honest, taken some shortcuts when it's uh, related to the gym fans. Aside from balancing, if you'll notice, I have these eye power motors and the shaft is about six millimeters uh, in diameter. Well, the gym fan actually is, is larger in diameter. So um, I have these plastic prop spacers or washers that the uh, gym fan has come with and if you look none of them really I mean there's not one of these that fits perfectly on there that's probably the closest and you could maybe file that down a good bit I've, I've actually got that one on there before but it takes quite a bit of uh, work drilling or screwing on and then uh, screwing it off but um, what I'm going to do is because previously I've just put this guy on there and screwed him on and you know gone to flight but the reality of it is with that little bit of offset you can create you know if, if this thing sits to one side or the the other your your hub's not going to be balanced so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take measurements like I said this is about 5.88 and we'll just call that six millimeters in diameter and I'm going to 3d print basically a washer or spacer that we can put in here and get this nice and snug. So we'll aim to have something similar to what I have for the Grotmers. Now these are aluminum spacers but they go from 8 millimeter to 6 millimeter. So I will take some measurements and kind of walk you guys through just a simple uh, design so that we can 3D print a uh, spacer and put it in there and balance and be ready to go. This is my little scratch pad on my workbench. We know the inside diameter, uh, which is where the spacer will go, is six millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the outside diameter. So 9.34 millimeters. We'll just call that 9.4. And now let's measure the depth or the thickness of this guy and it looks like this will be about we'll call it 2.6 millimeters and those really are the three dimensions we're going to need and I'll go ahead and dive into uh, Rhino 3D we'll design this really quickly and then we'll uh, print four of them and see how they turn out okay so I'm in Rhinoceros 3D and Rhino 3D is one of the uh, better programs, probably the best program that I've found for uh, designing for 3D printing on a Mac. So that's my plug. Anyway, let's get started. So we'll go ahead and create a circle. And the uh, diameter of the outside circle was 9.4. So we're going to type in a radius, half that, which will be 4.7. We'll do another circle, which will be the inside uh, circle or diameter for what's going to go around the uh, motor shaft and that was six millimeters in diameter so we'll use three millimeter for the radius and then lastly take a look at perspective view over here we're going to extrude this to give it a thickness and if you guys recall that was a 2.6 millimeter extrusion and lastly let's take a look at this see the shaded view it's just a uh, kind of a cylinder right now. Let's go ahead and make a hole, cut out. 
Then I'll select the surface and we're just going to bring that up right. If you look down here in front view, click again and now go to perspective you'll see that we have our spacer. Let me go ahead and export this. Okay, so I've exported my spacer to an STL file from Rhino 3D. We'll go ahead and grab that. And you can see it right here on the build platform. And we'll go ahead and add, you know, there are a couple ways to do multiples. You can just add them multiple times and then move them around on the platform. So I'll add it. Okay, looks like we have, let's just move these there, there. So there we have four, not really well aligned, but you get, get the point. So you can either, uh, you know, design or copy and paste four of these in your design program or in MakerWare you can actually add uh, multiple uh, designs. You know, they don't have to be the same either. So next we're going to go ahead and click Make It. And I'm going to do, since these are, you know, we want these to be somewhat rigid, um, I'm going to do the infill at 50% number of shells to layer height uh, 0.2 millimeters which is great and then I'm going to basically export I have a um, SD card in here since my computer isn't directly connected to the MakerBot right now so I'll just save that and you'll notice down here it, you'll see that it's slicing and then um, writing to the file and we'll take it over to the replicator 2 and give it a print so we have our SD card in and you can see our spacer file. So we'll go ahead and select that and let the extruder warm up and then we'll start printing. You can see our spacers are coming to life. Now they're done. That was a print time of four minutes, so uh, not bad at all. Okay, so here's our 3D printed spacer. It's a little snug on the uh, motor shaft and if we look at the actual prop, it's just a little tight in there, but you know our measurements turned out pretty good. If we actually measure the inside diameter you'll notice, um, let's see how that looks, we're at 5.65 millimeters instead of the 6 we were looking for. And from what I've read, that's you know fairly common. There's a little bit of a margin of error or tolerance um, on the X and Y axis. All I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to widen that inside diameter about two tenths of a millimeter, and then we'll get it on there and um, take a look. Okay, so I've done another version where I bumped up uh, the inside di diameter by a few tenths of a millimeter, and it's on there nicely. Our gym fans are all balanced. I had to. Use a bit of sticky tape on each prop, scotch tape. So the test flight after balancing went so-so. It was actually one of the better uh, videos that I've, I've been able to film with a gym fan, but still not you know, what I would consider worthy of showing you guys. But one thing that I noticed uh, after pulling, pulling the uh, camera off was this, this left rear motor, if you listen, it's got some grinding. So it looks that either the uh, prop shaft might be a little bit bent or maybe there's a loose magnet or dirt in here. I'm going to uh, take it apart, but it looks like, you know, from what I can tell and just the uh, amount of time I spent into getting, reducing vibrations, balancing props, that really the motor could be the source of the problem. So some of the things that I went over today are just, you know, getting the labels clear, cleaned off the motors. I'm not really sure how big of a impact that had but um, they were kind of placed on there randomly and I just wanted to make sure that I could rule that out of the equation. Um, then we 3D printed these spacers and some of you have asked about the MakerBot and just you know my initial thoughts. Originally I had a bunch of problems getting it up and running but since then it's, ran, it's, it's done great and um, I realized that having a 3D printer is overkill for printing um, these spacers but it, it does come in handy you know 
took me a, a couple minutes to design, a few minutes to print, and you know, in the grand scheme of things, saved me a trip to, to the hobby store. The spacer worked out well, it's in there nice and snug. And then lastly, I just um, did some balancing, some tape balancing. So that's it for now. Like I said, I'll, I'll go ahead and dive into you know, my one motor issue and then see if I can get everything balanced and I'll follow up with, with a, a video. But until then, I hope this was useful and thanks for watching.